Today I'm going to be showing you some tips and tricks inside Photoshop as to how to take an image like this and then turn it into something like this. What is going on guys? Shooting Dave here. So good to see your faces. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you're new here and you don't know what I'm about, I am a photographer from London that now lives here in Los Angeles and I make photo and video editing tutorials. So if that sounds like something of interest to you, then please do consider subscribing. Okay, so today we are talking about one of my all time favorite photographs that I have ever taken. It is of Joachim Wagard and I shot it at Gatbil Rudskogen in July of 2018, I want to say. Now let me talk a little bit about the setup of the shop. Obviously, I was in a car. There is no way I'd be standing in front of a drift car on a corner because, well, I'd get run over. I was inside Sultan Twin Turbo LSX BMW E92 and we were drifting at around 70 miles an hour. And this is super fun, a unique experience. However, I'm wearing a full race harness. That means I'm bolted to the seat and there's no way that I could possibly get my eye to the viewfinder. So I actually shot this without looking. Pretty lucky if you ask me. That's why the focus is a little bit off. It's not 100% perfect. However, I can't really fix focus issues inside Photoshop. Uh, what I can tackle though is all of the motion blur. I can actually make that ground look like it's moving much faster. I can spin those wheels up and get those tires looking like they're ripping around the track a lot more. And in my mind, this will add a lot more emotion to the image and actually make it much more powerful, much more like how I remember it rather than the actual image I captured. It's still one of my favorite photographs, but I think there's room for improvement. So let's jump inside Photoshop and we can walk through some of these steps. Okay, so as we jump into Photoshop, there are a couple of things that I like to take care of first of all. Now I like to duplicate my layers, that way I've got a reference layer so I can monitor how my process is going. So if I don't like the way my editing is going, I can go back and check the original. And if it's looking rubbish, then I'll change it. If it's looking good, then we're moving in the right direction. Anyway, basically I duplicate my layers. Once I've done that, I tend to run it through a camera raw filter. Now, as I mentioned earlier, I had heavy shadows and I wanted to bring those back. So it's simply putting it through the camera raw filter allowed me to see much more information to the shadows. And all I did was lift up the shadow slider, so nothing really technical there. Once that's done, it's now time for a bit of housekeeping. Now, I like to be able to work on the background and the car separately. It's just a workflow that I've adopted. So I wanted to path out the car. Now I did this using the pen tool and my Wacom pen. Now, if you don't know how to use the pen tool or you've never heard of it before, I've made a whole video on that and you can check it out right up here. It's super helpful and it's probably a must have for techniques like this. Once I'd masked out the car of the background, I now converted it for smart filters. Now, basically I'm converting the layer into a smart object and ready for smart filters. So what does that mean? Well, essentially it means it's a non-destructive way of using filters. You can go back at any time you want and adjust the amount of blur that you put through it. Now, I highly recommend adopting this workflow as it's much better than committing to a certain amount of blur and then being frustrated with it and not being able to change it later on. That means you have to go through the whole process again, but with smart filters, you can do it anytime you want. To convert a layer to a smart filter, simply select your layer, come up to filters, and you'll see convert for smart filters. Hit that, and that will allow you to start making adjustments. Um, once I've done that, I went to filter, blur gallery, and then selected path blur. So if we open up what I did earlier, I can walk you through what I did. Now at first glance, it might look a little bit intimidating, but essentially with path blur, is all you're doing is telling Photoshop how to blur an image, and you're basically drawing a path along which Photoshop will blur it. Now the goal here is to basically use enough paths or control points so that you can get an accurate blur out of Photoshop. I didn't go anything too crazy here, I just wanted to make sure that the foreground was getting nicely blurred. Um, you basically want to put in as much control points as you feel like you're needing and what you want to avoid is any artifacts. So if you see any lines that are getting bent or zigzagging, you don't want that and that's why you might want to add more control points. So I went through did that. Um, I didn't go too crazy with the amount of motion blur because I, didn't, I wanted this to look a little bit more realistic. 
but you can use your own judgment as to what works for you. Now a little tip here is I like to turn off preview when I'm doing this. This makes it much more efficient when laying out these paths. Otherwise, each time you add a new one, Photoshop's gonna calculate in the background as to what that blur might look like. And that drastically slows down your workflow. So I like to turn off preview whilst doing it. Anyway, once you've got all your paths laid out, hit OK, go and make a cup of tea or whatever, come back and Photoshop would have blurred your image for you. Now, if we turn this on and off, you'll notice that I've actually blurred everything above the horizon line, which we don't want to do. We only want to blur the foreground. So I took one of those duplicated layers from earlier and I basically just masked it in with a simple mask so that everything above the horizon remained in focus. Now, if you've never used layer masks before, I've done a whole tutorial on those as well. So if you want to take them out, they're up here. I'm pretty happy with how the motion blur on the ground is looking, however, it has done one thing that we didn't want it to do. It has actually motion blurred the shadow of the car. That's not really desirable. So all I did then was basically go around with a pencil and I traced around the original shadow from the first image and I basically passed it out until I got the shape complete and I filled it with black, softened it a little bit with a uh, Gaussian blur of about five pixels and then set it to multiply and finally I found an opacity that I thought worked. So that way we can add back the shadow that we blurred and it looks much more realistic now. Okay, so foreground is looking pretty good, but what about those wheels? This car is drifting. That rear wheel will be spinning like a madman. So let's go and have a look at how I fixed that. Okay, so I wanted to spin up the rear wheel. Now I wanted the rim to spin and I also wanted the tire sidewall to spin. So to do that, I basically did the same as I did before with the background. I pathed around the tire and the wheel itself, converted it for a smart filter, but this time I went to filter Blur Gallery and I selected Spin Blur. Now the controls inside Spin Blur are a little bit limited and there's not really much help inside of Photoshop. Essentially what you want to do is take the ellipse and match it up with the surface that you're wanting to blur. I wanted to blur the sidewall so I used that as my guide and I basically lined up the ellipse with that pushing and pulling the control points until it fit nicely. However, when you actually preview the spin, you might notice that it looks a bit odd. Now that's because the center point of the uh, spin blur is actually offset. It'll be dead center to the ellipse and that's not how you want it. You actually want to offset it so it'd be to the center of the rim. Photoshop doesn't really tell you how to do this and I found it by accident. So if you're a Windows user, it's Alt. If you're a Mac user, it's Option. And if you press and hold that down, you can actually offset the center point of the spin blur and line it up for where it should be. In this case, it wants to be the center of the wheel. And once you're done, it looks much nicer. The front wheel is a bit of a different story, but we've already covered the techniques that we're going to be using. Now to consider the front wheel, we need to consider it as two different parts, the tire tread, and the tire wall. So that way we can actually blur both of them differently. And we're gonna actually use both techniques. So for the tire tread, you're going to use the path blur. And for the tire sidewall, you're actually going to use the spin blur. And if that wasn't clear, here's the path blur that I actually use for the tire tread. And here's the spin blur that I actually use for the tire sidewall. Now to add a little bit more spice to this image, I thought it could do with some more smoke. Now essentially I have a bunch of smoke brushes and all I did was paint through the image with them and play with the opacity and rotation of them. And so if I layer these all up together, it looks pretty cool and it looks much more emotional, much more like I remember the image. Now, if you want to set of these brushes yourself, I've actually left Alex McKenzie's uh, video on how to use them and install them down below. He actually gives away these brushes for free, so be sure to check out that video. It is well worth it. And that is it. This is the final image. Now I'm super pleased with how it came out. Adding a little bit more motion blur and some more smoke really did make it more emotional to me. It helps connect with how I felt during the time of taking that photograph and it really conveys the amount of speed and aggression that's going on in there. So I'm super stoked with how it came out. Now, if you've never heard of Gap Bill before, it's one of my favorite events of all time and I actually have a couple of videos on it. So if you wanna check it out, click the link up here. And that is all from me guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you've got any comments or questions, let me know down below. If you haven't already, please do subscribe and follow me on Instagram. I am at ShootingDave and as always guys, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.